All right. We're back and not to be content with just anything, I wanted to go ahead and continue tonight by removing the head because reasons. And I scoured all over the place looking for my torque wrench. And I remember I left it at my other location where I keep uh, my race bikes. So <laughs> I like using my torque wrench because it has that ratcheting action and it's just it has more leverage than a regular um, 3 8 or half inch drive. So what I'm doing is staging, staging it for the 12 millimeter to remove the, or to loosen the head bolts here. All right, I just had my 12 millimeter. Oh, it's on the 3 8 drive. Duh, Dewey. I got excited looking for things and I know I normally don't misplace things that badly. Before I remove or I loosen the head bolts, what I need to do is, is loosen these because they're not really meant to hold a lot of tension. And those are 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, um, just these bolts that marry the head to the jug. And you know, these don't take a huge amount of torque and I don't foresee they put in much resistance. Yeah, broke, them up, broke that one loose quite easily. There we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those. And, and what they do is where the cam chain um, operates on the head here, you know, that's a gasket surface and that gasket surface needs to be held held together to prevent oil leaks. So it just makes sense. Okay. And you can see they, they are a specific bolt because they have a smooth collar. Is that a collar? No, just, it's a certain amount of area that is non-threaded where it goes down into the head. You can see here. The smooth area is in the area where it's going down into the head here. And again, I'm going to itemize those in baggies so that I don't misplace them when we're done here. So I've got that removed, and we've got four, we've got four head bolts here. I'm going to do that in a crisscross manner. And I'm, I'm going to might, might be a little bit frustrated by this a little bit because I don't have a ratcheting function, so there's going to be certain positions that I'm going to have to reposition the, the tool. And these are usually torqued to about, for stock configuration, about 33 foot-pounds. So it's going to take a little bit more than that to get it loose. So I got that one broken loose. And again, in a crisscross pattern. Okay. Okay. So I went from this back part to the front part, and I'm going to go over here to this side, and then back to this side. Okay, broke that loose. A lot of people might not be able to do this because that does take quite a bit of force to hold on to this body of it. Hmm, I might see if I can step it over here. Oh boy, this last one's holding on pretty good. Oh, it's always the last one. Right guys? Okay. This is where, when you're just doing a top end, it's a lot easier because you have the engine uh, firmly mounted into the chassis of the bike. So although you have your 
your head, your top top engine mount removed. The rest of it is held in place firmly. Oh, oh, it was this one here. Oh, baby. I was trying to give a good shot on this, but it just ain't gonna work. There we go. And that would be a really bad sign or a bad sound if you were thinking that righty tidy was lefty loosey. <laughs> okay. And we will be using these factory head bolts, even though this kit does come with studs. I just don't like, I don't like studs in this frame because to service the top end on this, They make it a pain in the butt, and these things, these stock ones, are more than robust enough to get the job done for a long time. Again, this is one of those times where, yes, I would have a lot less time invested in it if I used my power tool. Okay. But... And we may move to that on certain parts. We may do that. So each one of these head bolts have a washer on them that we need to make sure and keep track of that sets against the head surface. Thankfully, I still have my pin, a little pin magnet, and I got my washer. It sets just like that. We're going to pull this head off in just a second here. Washer. And if you're worried about orienting these correctly, you can see that the black mark or the dark mark is facing up against the bolt. And on the underside, it's not, it doesn't have any indentation on it. It doesn't have a different color to it. a bit done. Again, I cleaned this up quite a bit. And it's going to get a little bit dirtier. But this is going to give us a chance to inspect our top end and see what kind of case or what kind of wear it has. Oh, that broke loose quite easily. I'm just going to let that drop down. 
cam chain. We have dowel pins on it. Keep holding the head to the cylinder. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Our head gasket is partially sticking to the dowel pins on the jug or cylinder. Yeah. Eh, can't say I've had that happen a lot of times. There we go. So, so we got a dowel pin that's stuck in the. Yeah. Ooh, it about fell down into the engine, which is not that big of a deal. I like to keep them with each other. Yeah, this thing looks pretty good, fairly clean. So there's our head. I'm going to be really careful not to mar that surface, so I'm going to set it in such a way where it's stable. The front front part of the the front cam chain guide comes out at this point. We can remove our cylinder head gasket. This is a little wacky. I can't help but think if somebody had been in here before. You, know, you just got to be a little bit suspect when you are dealing with somebody else's engine at some point. This little rivet holding these together. There's a three-part gasket. It's got, or is it two-part? Yeah, there's three parts to it. Well, we're going to set that off to the side and inspect it later. It looks like this surface may have been treated with something. Hmm. All right. So now we need to get our, looks like a 10 millimeter again. Because so I'm going to go ahead and pull this cylinder off of here. I think it's a 10 millimeter. Okay, 10. Oh, I'm going to need an open end wrench. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and grab my open end wrench here. It's a 10 millimeter, so it'll probably take forever for me to remove it or to find it. It's one of those things, folks. It's close to the end of the day, and Dewey's tired. It's not an excuse. Here's our end wrench. And I would use an, a ratcheting end wrench, but there's just not enough room for it to fit on there. So. These are studs in the block here, and there's a nut that I'm removing here on the studs. And this is on the clutch side. What I usually do with these nuts is these nuts is I put I put these nuts <laughs> I can't help it on the bolts that go and hold the head together. So that helps me keep track of them. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Uh, I hope he got paid a bunch of money for that. To sit that one liner. 
Okay. So there's the little head bolts. So the reason why these go together so well is because, again, like I said, those are studs. And basically these set right, right on top of each other. There we go. All right. Ready for the big reveal? Okay. Here comes a cylinder off. Okay. So I'm going to break out my how well this is going to show up. This has got some visible cross hatching which you know usually is an indicator for cylinder health but the only thing that really matters is the the dimensions on it. But that looks like a healthy cylinder. I mean, this was a well-running engine. The other thing that we can do is we can remove the piston, but I'm sure done today with it. And to determine where the, what the problem was, all I can do is take this top ring off of the cylinder head, or cylinder here, cylinder head. Ugh. And I can measure the ring in gap clearance down in the cylinder and see just how worn it is. But at this point, I've had enough. I'm done today. So with that being said, here one more thing. One more thing I'm going to do. One more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and remove... this base gasket. And if there's somebody that was being weird and they'd been in this engine, which I don't think they have been, some of the DRZ novices would take a and put a single layer base gasket on here. That would be off of the E model with intentions that that little bit of, see I, I cut myself a little bit, that little bit extra that you save yourself by only having, say, a single layer base gasket here, you get more compression. I don't care about that. We're going to pick up our compression with our piston. Now, let's just say that you got a relatively new DRZ. The cylinder itself, it can stay the same if it's, it's in good health, and you can take and put an aftermarket stock bore and raise the compression up to say 12 to one or so, just make sure you run, I think even 12 and a half to one, uh, and just make sure you run premium fuel and you can have you know a little bit snappier engine here. Okay, one more thing to keep track of. We took our cylinder off. We've got our dowel pin here and dowel pin here. They're in place, very good. So, just as a precaution, I'm going to cover this. And like I said, I'm going to put all of my materials in a in plastic bags. I'm going to do that off camera. But just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.